You want to install a new aftermarket head unit into your vehicle, but maybe you're feeling lost in a sea of wire spaghetti, and maybe you're wondering what connects where and what are the best practices for making all of these different connections. Well, whatever you do, for the love of the car audio gods, don't start cutting wires in the vehicle. An adapter harness that we're going to make allows us to simply plug in the new aftermarket piece of equipment into the OEM vehicle wiring. But while we're making this harness, what are some of the common mistakes that we need to avoid? And what's the best way to make this harness so that it's good and reliable and robust in the future? That, my friends, is coming on up. Hey, what's going on? My name is Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, I do car audio reviews and build log videos and tutorial videos like this video. Why? Because I feel that music is meant to be experienced and not just heard. And at one point, I was in your guys' shoes. I didn't exactly know how to do all this stuff and I found it really challenging. So I hope that this resource will help you guys get one step closer to designing, building, and installing your dream car audio system. To me, part of that musical experience Experience is having a system that we can count on that we know is going to be reliable and that's where wiring comes in and it's really critically important so let's start making this harness. When you go to start installing an aftermarket radio and you start working on the wiring harness, you're gonna have a couple of different components that you need. First off, we're gonna have the harness that comes with our new aftermarket piece of equipment, the new head unit. Next up, we have our vehicle adapter harness, and this is what we'll be connecting to our radios harness in order to actually plug into the vehicle. So depending on what vehicle you have, this plug is going to change as it plugs in to the vehicle. Finally, you may have a third aspect of your harness depending on what you're looking to install. In this case, I want to retain the steering wheel controls, so I have a little module here, and this module also has its own harness that we're also going to bundle in here. Now, in addition to the wiring harnesses, I have all the different tools I'm gonna to be using. First off, I have a soldering station for actually heating up the solder that we're gonna be using to join the wires. I have my solder here, and it's really important that you use the right solder, so I'll have a link to all this stuff down in the video description. I have my little wire holding station here so I can hold each side of the harness while I'm working on it. I also have wire strippers in order to strip the insulation off the wire. I have some scissors in case I need to trim anything up. I have a bunch of pieces of heat shrink that are pre-cut to length. These will be used to cover the exposed connection once we're done. To shrink those, I'll be using this heat gun. And then finally, to bundle everything up, I'm gonna be using these special Tessa tapes, which are the OEM manufacturer's equivalent that allows us to bundle up the harness so everything looks good. The wiring harnesses will generally come with a little bit of the insulation already stripped away, but I actually like to have quite a bit stripped away. You can see the different manufacturers will strip more than some of the others. So this is the radio harness. This has just a little bit less than what I would like to see. So I'm gonna strip those a little bit more, but I'm also gonna strip these quite a bit more. So I wanna strip away about an inch of insulation. And you can see that I locate it in the correct wire hole. And I simply squeeze it, and it's gonna strip that insulation back and I can then pull away the rest. Now during this part of the process, it's a good idea to know what wires you don't necessarily need to strip. For instance, there's a mute wire on the wiring harness for the radio. I'm not gonna be using that. And there's also a reverse gear input signal wire that I'm not gonna be using because I'm not installing a backup camera. So it's a good idea to refer to the manual that comes with the radio so you know what wires connect to what and what you won't be using. Making these wiring connections is generally pretty easy because it's pretty standard. The red wire is generally going to be a 12 volt switched lead, meaning when you turn the car on and the radio comes on, this is going to have 12 volts on it. And when it's not on, it's not going to have 12 volts on it. That wire is generally red. And I'm going to say generally for everything because it's not always the case. You wanna make sure that you refer to your instruction manual. Yellow is going to be a 12 volt constant. Black is going to be your ground. Blue is going to be your power antenna and or amp turn on wire. Orange is your illumination wire. And then these eight remaining wires that are violet, green, 
gray, and white. These are gonna be your four speakers, the positive and negative for each. So I've stripped all the wires that I need to in order to make the connections on these harnesses. And what I also did, any of the wires that I know that I'm not gonna to need to use, I actually bundled them up. And what I like to do with the Tessa tape, once I'm done bundling, is I'll leave a little flag intentionally at the end of the wrap. In other words, I'll double over the tape on itself so it doesn't stick to anything. I do this so that in the future, if I need to open up the wiring harness, it's easy to do so. It's easy to find the end of the tape. The next thing I need to do here is I need to put the pieces of heat shrink over the wire before we make the connections. And guys, I can't stress this enough. This is something that is super easy to forget. So try to avoid that. Make sure you have it on there. Now this is an advanced step and it's something that's kind of easy to miss, but you want to consider your layout. I know that I have to connect this red wire to this red wire, but because I'm also installing this steering wheel control module, I need to connect this red wire to that bundle of three. Now for my layout, I know that the new aftermarket radio is gonna be here. I know that this is going to be going into the dash and this guy is gonna be sitting inside the dash as well, tucked away. So I want this wiring to run next to the wiring that's connected inside the dash. In other words, I want it connected something like that rather than the opposite way around. This is important to consider because you want to twist your wires together in that location, but you also want to take into account the fact that you need the heat shrink to slide over it. So for the red wire and the black wire, which are the only wires I have to connect here as part of these harnesses, I've put the heat shrink over here. I'm gonna be connecting these two yellow wires first. What you can do is you can see I've already kind of twisted the wire. I'm going to bend it at about its halfway point, kind of like 90 degrees. And I will do that to each of these wires. So there we have it. Now what we can do is we can hook those two bend locations together and we're going to spin the wire on each side around itself. So there we have it. The reason I like doing it like this is because you're wrapping one wire around the other and then soldering it, in my opinion, you get much more of a better hold. So to start soldering, I've got my soldering iron up to temperature. And what I'm gonna do is tin the tip of it, which I'm just gonna touch the solder to it. Now I touch the tip to the bottom of the wire and this will transfer heat much more effectively. And we want the solder to literally flow through the wire. So you can see I'm touching it to the top of the wire it's now flowing in. And undo one of the clamps here. We can slide the heat shrink over it. And now we can shrink it using the heat gun. I've made a few connections already. Off camera, I'm gonna finish these up. All the connections are made, everything is heat shrinked, so now it's wire bundling time. So I find that if you just kind of lay out the stuff where you know you're gonna want it, I know that this is going to have to tap into the vehicle wiring back here. So I pretty much have everything location-based, so I know that I should be good to go. I can start wrapping it with the tape. A few notes about Tessa tape. The reason I like using this is because it's what the manufacturers use. We wanna keep what we're installing as OEM and reliable as possible. So it's going to bundle everything nice. It's going to look nice and factory. It keeps all of our wires nice and managed so we don't have to worry about them getting snagged on anything when we're installing. It's just a good best practice, so I'm gonna wrap it around as you can see. And once I get to the end, much like I did before, I'm going to leave a little flag so that I can remove it if need be. Now you may have noticed when I was wrapping everything up that I kept the bundles that don't have anything connected to them, I kept them separated. And I did this intentionally because let's say somewhere down the line, we do decide to add a backup camera into this vehicle. I don't wanna to have to fish that wire out of my big bundle here. This way I have it easily available. I've left a little flag, I can just unwrap it. But in the meantime, what we're going to do just to retain it so that we don't have to worry about it flopping around and getting in the way is I'm just gonna secure it with a zip tie. I don't wanna tighten down the zip tie super tight because I wanna be able to cut it if need be. But something very important that we're gonna do here is we're gonna use some flush cutters and trim it. And the reason that we wanna use flush cutters is we wanna make sure that there's not a jagged edge sticking out of here that can cut somebody's hand. So that's nice and flush, this will work well. Now one last thing we can do, and this can help us prevent some issues further down the line, is we can check for continuity. With continuity, if we 
make contact, you can see that our multimeter is going to beep. We can connect one end here and connect the other end here and just make sure that we have continuity. In other words, our soldered connection is good. Now, why don't we use something like this in order to connect all of our wires? If you guys are familiar, this is what's called a butt connector. You put a wire in one side, a wire in the other side, and you crimp each side. Almost every time that I've diagnosed some sort of radio issue, it's been that somebody installed these and they didn't crimp them quite right and they ended up eventually coming loose. I really believe in the saying, do it once and do it right. So in my opinion, I think you should go with soldering from the get-go. If you enjoyed this video and you can hit that thumbs up button, that would be appreciated. And remember guys, this is a two-way interaction here. So if there's something that you would like to see in a future video or if there's something that you wanna add to the conversation, I'd really appreciate it and it helps me help you guys better. So let me know by posting a comment down below. If you'd like to check out some of my other videos, you can do so here on screen. And if you'd like to be updated when I upload these future videos, I would love to have you as a subscriber. A special thanks goes out to John, Brian, Ali, Stephen, Jerry, EJ, Emmanuel, Truman, James, and Colin, and the rest of the Patreon support team. A big thanks to all those dudes for helping crowdfund the making of these videos. As always, my friends, thank you all for watching.